Believe it or not, the spring and summer collections are done. <laughs> yes, yes, it is the end of June, beginning of July. In fact, this thing will be the first day of July. Happy July. Uh, but uh, we're now getting into fall. Um, fall collections are already being announced. Where Beauty has come out with their fall collections that are, I think we're launching like the 6th. Uh, more is coming late July that's fall, so <laughs> I guess July is now fall. It used to be August. Um, now it's July. So uh, what I do at the end of like a season, at the end of summer I did one, end of fall last year, end of winter, sort of the best and worst of the season. And I thought since we made it through spring and summer collections, at least for the most part, um, I'd go through and give you the best and worst of the first six months of the year. Uh, so spring and summer. I have to say, I don't really have any products that were terrible. There's one that I really don't like. But the rest of them are subjective. They are, well, everything's subjective, but the rest of them are more like, I think they were terrible for the price, or I think they were terrible because they didn't live up to expectations. But there's only one product that's actually just, in my opinion, bad, as in not like something that anyone should buy, because I just don't think it's, it's a good product. Uh, but the rest is kind of just like, they're okay, but for the price or for my expectations, they were a fail. There's a lot of great products that came out, but I tried to keep these things limited to literally the things that I thought were just spectacular. That were just the best of the best of the best. And that is hard to do because there's a lot of products where I was like, oh, this is extremely good. Um, but I just tried to keep it like super strict. So, um, and in each category, I'm gonna give the, in the best and the worst, I'm gonna give the brand that I think is the best and the worst of the year. So let's start with foundations. Um, what I have on now is the Clay de Poe. This is the Cushion Foundation. The actual name is the Radiant Cushion Foundation Dewy. This is in B10. Um, it's a square case. I love this foundation. Every time I wear it, my skin looks flawless. Um, it's an amazing foundation. It's, yes, it is a little dewy. Um, it gives your skin a little bit of healthiness. <laughs> If you have drier skin, I think you're gonna really love it. I think if you have regular skin, you're gonna re regular, you know, uh, not dry, not oily. Uh, if you have oily skin, I can't really speak to that because my skin has never been oily in my life. Um, but the foundation works, I know people who have what you would consider, quote, um, non-dry, non-oily, average skin. Uh, I know people who are very dry, who love it. Uh, it's just, it's a phenomenally good foundation. The only thing, of course, is that it's in a, cu a cushion and I, you know, cushions can be messy and maybe they're not your favorite way of putting on foundation, but I have to say, I think that's part of why it looks so good. Um, I think the, the cushion just, just gives us like very light, but you know, excellent coverage. Um, it's a good, B10 is a good match uh, for my neck. It's just wears well. It gives enough coverage, but not too much. It looks skin-like, it has a little bit of dewiness. Um, it's not drying, it's good for mature skin, doesn't settle in the lines, plumps up the skin a little bit, phenomenally good. The other foundation is the Chanel uh, Le Beiges. This is the uh, Touch. You can see how much I have left of my bottle, if you do not believe that I use this all the time. This is my everyday foundation. Love this, travel with it, think it looks beautiful on. Very much like the Clay de Peau, actually, the finish. It has a little more coverage, I think. Um, and of course it's, you know, pump, it's not, it's not a cushion. Similar, similar look though. Beautiful, skin-like, a little dewy, easy to use, doesn't sit on the lines, wears well. I would say that both of these foundations, at the end of the day, I do look a little, not oily, <laughs> uh, but like I could use a little powder. And if you take a little powder or, um, like one of the Dior or whomever's like mat mattifying um, papers, it's perfect again. So, you know, again, my skin is dry. Um, so maybe if you're oily, you're not gonna love them, but I have to say like, I know people with different types of skin uh, types who just absolutely love that product. And so I, I can't 
I can't say enough good things. Um, okay, so those are the foundations. For worst, um, it's the Makeup Forever Skin Ve Matte Velvet. Now, this is not a bad foundation. And in fact, for powder foundation, it's actually pretty nice. It, you, I can actually wear it on camera. It actually looks pretty good. The thing is, though, if I try to use this with the sponge that's in here, uh, the sponge applicator, it's just way too heavy for my skin. It just, it dries out my skin. It's not a surprise. It's a matte velvet. <laughs> Again, this is why I was saying these aren't terrible products. They just don't work for me. So the way that I can use this is with a, like a buffing brush or maybe even a powder brush to give it like more of a, a very light coverage kind of look. Um, I can't use it as just with that sponge and put the foundation on and get that full coverage kind of thing. It just does not work for me. So if you have dry skin, I would, I would just say it's probably not a good choice for you. However, if you have oily skin or you have average, that'll probably work great. Um, and again, on camera, it looks good. It's just in person, it ages me. Powders, I have two powders. Um, so one is relatively new, it's the Dolce & Gabbana. This is the Solar Glow Powder. This was available at Harrods. I'm not really sure where else it's available, guys, to be, tell to be honest with you. Um, it's a phenomenally good powder. I have it on today. It's brightening. I showed how it looks on just bare skin. You can absolutely use it on bare skin. You can use it over things. Um, it's lightening, brightening. It doesn't even look like powder. Doesn't even, you're not even sure that there's anything on your face at first. So when I first started using it, I was like, is anything coming off of this? Like. It doesn't look like it, but on the skin, amazing. Uh, and the other one is from a while back. This is the Christian Dior, this is the Mitza Rose uh, Loose Powder. I used that under the eyes today. It's a fantastic powder. Um, the Westman Atelier Press Powders, I absolutely love. I'm fairly sure they were last year, although I'm getting a little, sometimes I get a little confused about when it was. Um, if they were this year, then absolutely they are on the top. I think they were around for the holiday. Um, so, but this, uh, I know came out for spring, even though it's, you know, not a spring looking thing. But anyway, um, so yeah, the um, Mitza Rose Powder, the loose powder is absolutely excellent. Do not get that confused with the other powder that is just glitter. This one is, is beautiful. The rose is, is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I don't have any powders that I picked up that I hated because I, I rarely pick up powder. I only pick up powder when I'm like fairly convinced that it's gonna be good. Um, okay, so blush. Um, I was I was tempted, I, I, I have two. I'd say one is a little more than the other. So uh, the Hermes, this is the, um, this is the Rose Ombre, I have it on today. Now these are the, the blushes that have a luminous sheen to them. These are not the ones that are usually the Hermes blushes, which are what I think they're called like a satiny matte or something like that, which I, they just, I don't think they look great on me, but these look phenomenally good on me. Um, and I love the finish. These are fantastic. Uh, so I strongly recommend them. I'm still going to pick up the third shade, but I'm going to do that. And then the other one is the Armani blushes. And this is, this is 50, this is Organza. This is one I ended up liking the most. I'm still waiting on 10. The box is now on hold in Ohio. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get around to doing my haul video. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. But anyway, um, I do really love this formula and I really think these blushes are beautiful. Um, however, I liked the, the cream, blushes that I talked about that they got rid of more. Um, I don't know if they're going to bring those back. Those were, and I talked about it, like they discontinued them. So, but I really do like this formula a lot. And if it wasn't for the fact that I feel like they replaced the other ones, I probably would have just said, oh no, these are fantastic. So I was a little hesitant there, um, but I do really recommend them. Also the Dior reformulated blushes. I like I love the ones that I bought, particularly Don Sante, which I think is a fantastic shade for someone like me who's very pale, who wants something very light that's just sort of like a, it almost looks like Jersey from Chanel. It's a, it's a phenomenal formula, but again, um, because Dior's old blushes I loved, I'm a little hesitant. I feel like I'm kind of like, eh. 
but I do really like the four that I bought, like a tremendous amount, and I do use them all the time. The Dansant Day I've used like practically every other day. So, and the Hermes, and the Armani, so it's, it's a tie. But I have to tell you, like, I really like the four that I picked up, but I can't speak to all of them because I haven't tried all the new ones yet, so I was just a little hesitant on those. But I do really like the Dansant Day, it's like one of my favorites now. I don't have any um, blushes per se, that were failures for me. I would say that the Dior Backstage disappointed me um, because the formula is not as good as the one before. However, I will say, especially the mahogany, the mahogany and the rosewood, to be honest, they both look really nice on the face. I haven't used the mahogany a lot because it's just very deep for me, but I have used the rosewood and I've gotten several compliments on it because it's a beautiful shade. Um, so, I can't say it's the worst of, like, it's not a fail, but I do think the formula is worse than it was, but it does look beautiful on the skin. Like I said, I don't have any true failures except for one this year. Uh, okay, F uh, bronzers, there were so many bronzers that came out that were amazing. Um, so, if I'm just picking my favorite, and I did my, my ranking, Gucci and, uh, you know, Tom Ford were still at the top, and they're still my my, they've been around for a while. Um, but third was the Jones Road. Um, this is light tan, which I have on today. It's a beautiful shade for me. It's a cool leaning bronzer. Uh, has just enough pigment, but not too much. The Dusty Rose that came out with it as well, of course, is pink. Uh, I use it as a blush, but it is a beautiful formula. I really, really like it. The NARS and the Pat McGrath and even the MAC are all up there, and I think they're all really good. Um, but again, if we're just doing best, I'm going to say it's the Jones Road because I just feel like that formula works the best for me, for my skin, more mature, drier skin. It just looks beautiful on the skin. And I like the fact that it's a little bit cooler. The NARS and the, um, Pat McGrath and the, um, the MAC are all a little warmer. Um, and the formulas in the MAC are like, some were good, some were weird. So I was just like, meh. Um, the NARS is really good, and I do really like the NARS. And the Pat McGrath is actually a lovely formula. It's just the shades I wasn't as fond of. Uh, for worse, it's the Hermes bronzer. And I'll tell you why. Why I find this, why this is on my worst list is because it's such an amazing formula. Like the, the blush, the luminous blush that came out, the formula is stunningly beautiful. And the shades are just, in my opinion, awful. They're just all warm and some of them are like yellow. And I mean, if you found a formula, if you found a shade that worked for you, I envy you. That's awesome because the formula is amazing. I just, I feel like, you know, for a hundred dollars a piece, they could have had some that were cool or reddish or, you know, something like, like any of them. Um, and there weren't. So I was just kind of like, okay. <laughs> So yeah, it was really disappointing for me because I wanted to like them. And, uh, you know, the formula is stunning, um, but I don't use them because the colors are just awful. Uh, okay, highlighter. I don't have a highlighter that's best of this year uh, for the first six months that I can think of. The Rare Beauty is the one I have on my cheeks right now, but that was last year. So I can't think of a highlighter that I absolutely loved this year, the first six months. However, I would say on the worst list is the Oasis from Tom Ford, and I know that's going to be a, uh, some people are going to disagree with that heavily, but I'll tell you why I say that. I say that because um, the shade is so gold, uh, so warm again, and the other shade that I didn't pick up is even more gold. Uh, I feel like, you know, if you're going to do a highlighter, I get it, you know, you, these companies are, they're not coming out of lots of them, but there was only two shades and one was gold and one was a little less gold. If you're gonna do it, at least have two distinct different shades. If you're gonna do like a light and a deep, because you're only gonna have two, okay. Or if you're gonna do like a warm and a cool, okay. Even if they were too deep for me, if they were like different undertones, I'd be like, okay, that's fair. They didn't do that. One's gold and the other one's a little less gold, the Oasis. So I just feel like, you know, Tom Ford could be more creative than that. They could be more, they could plan better than that. It was disappointing, to say the least. 
Um, okay. Uh, so eyeliner, my favorite eyeliner that came out was the Victoria Beckham. These are not new, but the shades, they've come out with Smoky Quartz, which I actually have on my eyes today. Um, the Seaside, all the bright colors, which actually are, are on their way to me. There's been some weird shipping around here. I don't know what's going on in Boston, but anyway, um, love, love her pencils. I love almost everything Victoria Beckham, actually. I don't talk about it a ton because there's like, she only comes out like one thing at a time, but her whole line is, uh, Phenomenally good. There's only very few things that I tried from her I really hate. Uh, I, you know, I don't, actually I don't think there's anything I've tried from her that I hate. There's some things that aren't my favorite, but phenomenally good products. Just phenomenally good. Um, I don't have any worst of in that category. Uh, we'll do we'll do eyes. We'll do we'll do eyes at the end. Um, mascara, Fenty mascara. Love this Fenty mascara. The new Fenty mascara this is excellent. I wear it all the time. Really, really like this one. Calorie from, from last year's, but this one is my favorite for the first six months. It's phenomenal. The Rouge Allure, this was the, the reddish one. This is the fail that I said that it's an actual fail. Um, I know this had come out before in the black. This is a terrible, terrible mascara, and I don't know why Chanel created it. Because the Chanel mascara, the original mascara, or the Chanel, they have a tubing mascara. They're both really good. The Chanel traditional, the old one, is excellent. So I don't know what this is. Like, it's just bad. It flakes everywhere. I tried the red one because I was like, maybe they improved the formula or something. No, it's just bad. <laughs> That's the one that I'm like, it's just a fail. It's a terrible product. Do not buy it. Do, do not get it. Uh, glosses. I have two. Uh, the Maximizers are my favorite of all time. These things, I don't care. I would recommend these to absolutely anyone. Everyone and anyone. If you wear a lot of makeup, if you don't wear a lot of makeup, if you... Don't wear a lot of lipstick if you wear a lot of lipstick. This is a phenomenally good product. If they get rid of these, I'm gonna be so upset. I'm gonna buy like 10 of them. I already have like 12 shades. They are a phenomenal product. They pump your lips, they make your lips more hydrated, they stay on, they're comfortable, they're beautiful. There's all different types of shades, all different types of colors, all different types of intensities. Absolute home run by Dior, in my opinion. They are amazing. They're expensive, but they're not ridiculous. They're not out of the park expensive. Probably my favorite product. If I if I only pick one, it might be that. Honestly, it's that good. Super amazing, perfect. Love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Um, lipsticks. You know, it's funny. I was going through my lipsticks and I'm like, what is my favorite lipstick? And my favorite is the Cicely Beverly Hills lipstick, the limited edition one. Do I have it here? I have it somewhere. I think I have it in my purse. Um, I'll put up a picture. Uh, it's it's the Sicily, it's the Sicily packaging. Oh, hold on, sorry. This is it. Number thirteen. Beautiful, peachy. I do have a backup of this. I've already used up quite a bit of it. Amazing lipstick. Absolutely love it. Um, I wouldn't say that you know. There's. Uh, I don't know if it'll work on everybody, but I think it'll work on a lot of people. I can't say I love it as much as the maximizers because the maximizers, there's like, I don't know, 25 shades or something. Um, then the clay de po, the sparkles. I love this product and I really think it's beautiful on the lips. But the thing I have to say about these is there's like four sparkle shades and they're very expensive. Like they're like $50 or $45. Now I know clay de po is, you know, an expensive brand, luxury brand, but I think the Dior ones are like, I'll put the price down below. It's it's not half, but it's a lot cheaper. So if I had to choose between the two of them, I'd pick the Maximizers. I just think they're a better product. So yeah, I, I like the Clay de Poe. It's not a fail, but it's it's not like it's a really great product, but for the price, I just think it's I think it's a little overpriced. Um lipsticks. Um there's not really any lipsticks other than those, and those are like glosses and stuff. I don't have a fail. I can't think of anything that I've really hated. I didn't have anything on my list that I hated. If there is something that I hated and I've forgotten, <laughs> I'll add it, but I don't think there is. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything. So eyeshadows, there were a lot of good eyeshadows this year, a lot of great ones actually. Um, and there's some that I think are spectacular. Uh, so hard to whittle it down. First, I just wanna mention, and this is kind of a caveat, is the collection, the denim collection by Guerlain. I know there's lipsticks in there. Um, but this, just to me, is the standout of the year. 
Um, I talk about in my, you know, will I buy it? Everything is neutral and everything is neutral. And again, I understand why neutrals are good. Don't get me wrong. Get it. I like neutrals, but this was just such a unique color story and the packaging is amazing. And the lipstick cases are amazing. I love the two shades actually that I bought. Um, one is a velvet, one is a, a satin and more than satin today. I think this is 12. Just, I mean, guys, you know, when you, when you're doing something all the time, like reviewing makeup all the time, again, like the neutrals are beautiful. I get it. Um, they're usable, but when you come across something like this, it just makes you happy or at least it made me happy. I was like, finally something different. Uh, absolutely love it. The Eden Rock Dior eyeshadow palette I thought was really different. I didn't like it at first, um, but I've used it a lot, uh, specifically the blue, I will say. Um, I've got it on my eyes today with something else. I'll, I'll tell you what else is on my eyes, but I do have the blue Eden Rock um, in there, and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful blue, a very unique blue, uh, which I, you know, absolutely love. Um, the Natasha Denona Yucca Palette, uh, or is it Yucca? I'm never quite sure what it is, but I'll tell you guys, I mean, I know it's not going to be for everybody and, um, and that's okay. But what I would say about that is at least it's different. At least it's not a bunch of neutral or colors I've seen before. The formulas in there are really good. They all work, which is fantastic. Um, the, the pressed shimmers or whatever they're called in there, I think are fantastic. The looks I've done with that, I really like. Um, I didn't think I was gonna like the color story, but I'm very impressed. And then the Remembrance palette, which I'll tell you, yes, it is kind of neutral, and that's the thing that doesn't prompt me to say it's like the best of all time, but the formulas in here are pretty amazing. I gotta give it to Byredo. The two large palettes that they've done, the formula, outstanding. Just outstanding. So, um, yeah. Um, there's another one that I'm going to say is my, my favorite for the year, but I'm going to mention that when I talk about my favorite brand. Um, so the fails, uh, are two very large, very large brands. Tom Ford, this is an electric cherry, but I'm going to say cherry smoke wasn't really my favorite either, but electric cherry is, it's re it was really a disappointment because I was looking forward to those quads and when you put them on the eye, they all kind of blended into one shade and I was just kind of like, hmm, okay. Um, and frankly, all the Tom Ford quads this year, they're not bad. Like they've all been good, but they're not Velour's Khaki or Violet Sateen. So I'm really looking forward to the Runway collection. It looks more colorful. Maybe the holiday will be, I know sort of what holidays sort of look like, but I don't know the formula. I mean, Tom Ford can hit it out of the park and then he can do other things. Um, Hazy Sensuality, I really like, but it's not, it's not one that I would be like, absolutely no, like to no question, buy it. The Velour Satin or the, uh, Violet Satin, uh, Velour's Khaki or Violet Satin, I would recommend to anyone. If you like purple or green, like I would just be like, yes, buy it. It's that good. Um, I really can't say that about the others. Like they're all like good. They're good. But for the price tag, it's like kind of disappointing and I wanted them to be better. Uh, and then the other things are the Chanel oversized palettes. I haven't used these since they came out. And I gotta tell you guys, when I did the review on them, I kind of said I, I didn't particularly like them. I, they're supposed to be like eye and cheek. You can use them for, I just, I think they're blushes. They're not as good as the blushes that, you know, Chanel used to have. So they're just a letdown. The colors I just don't think are great. Um, yeah, I just don't like it. Um, and I don't think the formula is that interesting to be honest with you, um, more reds, more bright. I mean, they're not bad, but the product itself is not bad. It's not like the R R Chanel Rouge Allure mascara, which is just bad. Um, I just think it's a waste of money because it was expensive. And again, I haven't touched them since I got them. So yeah. Uh, so brand, and that leads into what I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is Suku. And Suku, this is their white packaging, their summer packaging, special packaging. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but hopefully you can see that. 
This is the 126. This is the um, purple, which I don't usually, you know, I'm not usually that big into the purple shade. But there's this shade here, which is showing up on camera almost like a silver. But if you look at it in the pan, see if I can turn it, see how it turns pink? It's like a duochrome. That is what I have on my eyelid. It is stunning. Uh, and then I have this shade underneath the blue. Um, Suku hit out of, Suku's been hitting out of the park for a long time. This is the other one that came out for summer. What I love about Suku also is that they have one warm or neutral or whatever you want to say and one cool in everything that they do. They do that every collection. Um, here's pre-summer, which had like one of my favorites of all time. You can tell I've used it quite a bit. The green. And then, like the purple with the pop of yellow. They do unique things. They go out of the, they don't just, you know, follow trends. They, they do what they want to do. They have their own color stories. Um, I am very disappointed that they, you know, stopped making their melting blushes, but I have all the melting blushes that have, they've ever released. I actually have a backup of shade nine. Thanks to Judy. Thanks, Judy. Um, so, you know, I am just so impressed by Suku that I'm just gonna keep singing their praises. The only thing I would say is they're difficult to get, and I know that, um, but I love their products. I love their creativity. I love their attention to detail. I think every color story is interesting, even if it you know isn't my favorite at first. It always ends up being something I like. The powder products that they make are phenomenal. The lipsticks are all really good. Even their like velvet matte lipstick I actually like. Um, <laughs> You know, I cannot say enough about Tuku. They're just, they're, they're the best. Um, and they have been actually for the last couple seasons, but definitely for the first half of this year compared to everything else. And the worst brand really hurts me, to be honest with you. And I struggled not, I was gonna be like, maybe I can, but the thing is, it, it is the worst in my opinion because I, I have such a fondness for this brand and I have so much of the products. And that's Shantikai. And, and the reason is, um, I got really excited over the, you know, summer collection with the bronzer and the highlighter and just to find that it was a re-promote was really disappointing. Um, and I feel like this, the, you know, the pre-summer and spring, the, or was it spring or was pre-summer? I can't remember. The collection was, was good. I actually liked one of the lipsticks quite a bit. Um, the blushes were really pigmented, which was great because, you know, uh, usually their blushes aren't that pigment, but I feel like like the cases weren't really unique. I haven't seen anything really different. The holiday collection from last year, and again, it was last year, was bad in my opinion. Like the packaging was just really disappointing. And if you have been a fan of Chantecai for a long time and using it for a long time, they used to have like such unique packaging and unusual things that I feel like... I feel, I feel like they're just kind of phoning it in right now. And I don't know why that is. And I'm hoping that that was just for a couple of things and it's gonna change. I'm hoping holiday will be phenomenal or maybe next year will be phenomenal. Um, their skincare is still like one of my favorite skincares. There's some products that I use that I absolutely love and use all the time. I'm not saying the brand as a whole I've given up on or that I'm not using it. Um, like I said, there's some Chantecai things that I love and the rose, tint like the one underneath and the tan I still love those and there's a lot of products I think are really good it's just again luxury luxury uh you know has something to do with packaging because you're paying a premium for a name you're paying a premium for the experience um whatever that means to you and I think uh part of it is being creative and outside of the box and unique and and has you know packaging and gives you a thrill opening it and keeping it on your desk and all of those things because otherwise frankly there's a lot of other products out there that are as good um that might not have as you know luxury packaging or luxury name uh, you spend a lot less money so there has to be and yes there's better ingredients and yes some of these products i would say i would argue like clay Depot, they really do spend up quite a bit of time uh, on the ingredients in their in their products um and so did chantecai so that's the thing, like, I gotta tell you, the Chantecai um, gel uh, foundation is still one of my favorites of all time. When they came out with that, that was pretty revolutionary. So 
that's what I'm talking about. Coming up with something that just nobody else has. It doesn't even have to be packaging. It could just be a revolutionary product. Um, I just haven't, I haven't really seen that from them lately. Um, so it saddens me to put them on the worst for the spring and summer, but that's just how I feel at the moment. Um, perfumes, I want to mention too. Um, one, the Kelly Pistachio. It's not what you, it's not like super nutty. It's more creamy nutty, but I absolutely love that fragrance. I have to tell you, I do wear it a lot. If you're looking for something comfy, cozy, it is phenomenally good. Uh, and the other one that just came out actually is the Tom Ford Lime Azure. Now, Lime Azure used to exist, so this is, I guess, a reintroduction. But to me, it does smell different because the first time it came around, I did smell it and I did not like it. This one I love. It's like a creamy lime, like a, like a sherbet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not sorbet, sherbet. Like there's a creaminess, a milky, electronic lime. Get, get a sample. Get your essay to get a sample. Uh, if you use Rhiannon um, at Nordstrom, she's a Tom Ford rep. Uh, tell her I sent you. Uh, sh you can get a sample from her. It's a phenomenally good fragrance. If you, if you like lime, you're gonna love it. Um, but it's a creamy lime and I, I actually, you know, Rihanna sent me a sample and I was kind of like, I'm not gonna like it. Oh my goodness, I like it so much, so much. I don't think it's limited edition, so you should have some time to pick it up, but I'm definitely buying that. Um, and I have to tell you, there have been a number of fragrances that I've recently picked up that have cost me quite a bit of money, but they're all ones that are being discontinued because that happens a lot in the fragrance world. I will talk about them when I get to do my haul video, which, I was gonna have up very soon, guys, but again, evidently there's no drivers for packages here on the East Coast, which I understand. I get it. I still would like my pa my package. Anyway, uh, on that note, so that's it for the best and worst of the first half of 2023. I have to say, guys, overall it's been a little, a little dull. Um, I don't think fall is gonna be particularly exciting. I think it's gonna be kind of boring, a little neutral. Again, it's not that the, the color story is like, neutral's fine, but I just, something revolutionary, something different, something new, a new product that we've never seen before. Like this Dolce & Gabbana powder, I don't know what this is, because this is not a regular powder. There's something different about whatever this is. That's impressive. And we can't even get it here. I don't know what's in it. And I don't know why like other product, like other brands, they don't have something like that. It's not a powder. It's the oddest thing. I can't even explain it. It doesn't kick up. It's like this very dry thing. But then when you put it on your face, you look younger. I don't understand. Um, Guerlain with their packaging. Why can't we have more of this? If it's more expensive, that's fine. I'll, I mean, we're already paying 90 to to $100 for some of these things. You can't add a pretty packaging on something. Um... The Dior Lip Maximizers, we'll, I will say, this was a revolutionary product. This, this actually was like, wow, I had not seen this before. This is impressive. That is worth it. And like I said, I bought like 12 of them. So, you know, yes, people are buying less for good reason. The economy's difficult and people are being more careful with their money. I think we should be more careful with our money anyway. But if something's good, if something works, people will buy it. Um, if it's worth it, it's not about people are being difficult or people, you know, don't want to buy. It's because they're smarter now. They're more informed, more educated. There's more people on YouTube and TikTok and all over social media saying, don't buy this. It's not that good. I mean, you know, in the old days, you went to every movie that came out because you had no idea if it was good or not. And it was the experience too. You went to the movies, but now you, you can watch previews and you can watch people be like, this is a terrible movie. Don't waste your money. So now you have that. So yeah, people are being more discerning. That's a good thing. So you have to come out, in my opinion, brands, you have to come out with things that are worth buying, especially if you're gonna charge $100 for it. <laughs> Sorry to get all spun up. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.